Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Nungerai. I'm a student at AMFIC, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. This is for the subject of practical deliverance and it's going to be a journey through the book Sunday Morning Bible Lectures by Dr. Ezekiel Guti, 2001. Lecturer Dr. Mafuriranwa. Enjoy. Sunday Morning Bible Lectures was written by Dr. E. H. Guti. It was published by Ijia Publications in Harare. Dr. Guti is an author of more than 70 other Christian books and he holds several qualifications including a PhD in religion. In his book, Sunday morning Bible lectures, Dr. E. H. Guti gives a perspective on these topics of extending the kingdom, soul winning, power of the blood, demons, staying free after deliverance, healing, talking with God, and child evangelism. Dr. E. H. Guti oversees thousands of pastors and evangelists worldwide. He is a man of love, a great intercessor, and a soul winner, according to the book Sunday Morning Bible Lectures, page 98. In part one of the book, the author talks about extending the kingdom, which is an order that was given by Jesus which is referred to as the Great Commission. In the Great Commission Jesus talks about making disciples of all nations and baptizing all the people unto true repentance not just to make them disciples but to make sure that the people they are united with Christ and living in victory over sin. In the Great Commission, the people they are taught how to obey the word and they are supposed to be doers, not just the word hearers. So one needs to be effective in extending the kingdom. Jesus spoke to his disciples about the kingdom. He told them to wait for the power of the Spirit. It can be seen that Jesus was answering the disciples' questions about the coming of the kingdom, and he taught them not to worry about times, but to get on with spreading the kingdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was not just for personal use or just to bless the church. It was given to win the world. So God is calling each and everyone in their churches or neighbors or nations or in the all the earth so that they extend the kingdom. Everyone is supposed to regularly witness to others about their faith. So Everyone must be involved in extending the kingdom, either at assembly level, at region level, or provincial level. You must be witnessing to other people. And the witnessing involves proclaiming the gospel through evangelism by having meetings or having some personal evangelism power of evangelism should also be seen by manifestation of the gifts of spirit which includes healing also presence evangelism this can be seen by the presence of Christ in the community caring for the needy or being involved in the community there must be even a team of evangelism an evangelistic team or a ministry to reach other areas and the nation during extension of the kingdom there must be cooperation with other Christians which can be direct or involve active participation 
where money is needed it also needs to be given and also sometimes the presence of the believers is needed everyone must have a vision to extend the kingdom to the ends of the earth this means going to countries overseas including even africa because the great commission according to the bible the writer quotes matthew 28 verse 18 to 20 which explains and commands believers to go ye therefore and to preach the gospel baptizing the people in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit so individuals or assembly they need to consider supporting some crusade teams by making prayers and giving them other involvement so assemblies at different levels like local provincial national and world level they need to develop outreach pro- programs in the process of extending the kingdom of god power of god must be demonstrated this can be seen through miracles deliverance healing so the kingdom of god must be portrayed to attract other people into the kingdom the gospel must be preached to the world such that when jesus the king returns there will be restoration or a complete fulfillment of the kingdom which will take place so winning is explained in the book as witnessing and this is described as honestly or clearly sharing one's experience of Jesus the holy spirit has a job to convince people of their need of Christ and what the believer is expected to do in so winning is just to give testimony of the experiences to be an effective soul winner one must get to know Jesus better Philippians 3 verse 10 mentions that I may know him this is on page 13 of Sunday morning bible lectures it says that the fellowship can be compared to that of a husband and wife that should be the intimate knowledge between the believer and Jesus Christ so a believer must know Jesus very intimately with a spiritual sense so that it produces children for the kingdom of God one's love for Jesus should make others want to know him we get to know Jesus better daily by reading through the word and following and obeying the word through prayer through singing praise and worship as we open our hearts to him an effective soul winner must also follow Jesus they must follow him in his steps and they must imitate Jesus all all the way all the step of the way and obey his word Jesus must also be uplifted he says in John 12 verse 32 if i am uplifted i will draw all men unto myself so jesus is the magnet that draws people to the point of the gospel so one must share their testimony and talk about their experiences that way uplifting jesus an effective soul winner has also to be persuasive Second Corinthians 5 verse 20 says we beg you as Christ ambassadors be consoled to God that was Paul explaining we need to be persuasive in witnessing many people know many facts about the gospel but they do not know 
the decision they need to make to commit their lives unto Jesus Christ. So as a soul winner, you must urge the people so that they can commit to Jesus Christ. So that they understand that there is need for them to be reconciled with Christ. The job of soul winning should not be done in a forceful manner. It's not about winning an argument, but it's about winning people, treating them in gentleness and with respect. The people that are being witnessed to, they should feel bigger, not to be feeling smaller or degraded. They should prefer to want the relationship that Jesus is offering. So one must be gracious when dealing with people or bringing souls unto Christ. The soul winning, to be effective, the soul winner must also make a decision that they will share their testimony of Christ and make or help the 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 believer the new believer to make a decision so preaching the gospel should be completed by urging the people to commit this is a vital important point that people who are so winners must be persuasive so that a decision is made by the people so that they commit to the life to commit to Christ and receive them into their lives so one must must be ready to persuade people so that they make decision that is how they make disciples of all nations some soul winners they fail because of lack of courage because of not knowing how to engage in cost conversation because of not doing the effective talking to bring the sinners to commit to Jesus Christ so one must ask if the people are saved directly or they must find out if they are born again or if they are Christians or if they have made Christ the Lord of their life and sinners must receive Jesus Christ to avoid being lost if they don't receive Jesus Christ they, they, they will feel guilty or they will face spiritual death and also they will be separated from God so a soul winner must know all this so that they can explain it they can explain to the people why they need to be saved why they need to make Christ the Lord of their life and this this sin when it remains it's, it makes life fruitless. All the beautiful promises of God that are expected by new convents, they will never be theirs. They can only be theirs if they make Lord their Savior. They will get things like peace. They will get joy. They will get a purpose of living and they will have fulfillment in their life. And above all, they will have eternal life. As per Ephesians 2 verse 1 to 10. Sin will make these people to be separated from God's presence. Hence, a soul winner needs to know all this so that they can clarify and explain to the prospective convicts so that these people can make the right decision of coming to Christ. The blood of Jesus has got power. Revelations 12 verse 11 says, 
and they overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives even unto death the writer of this book says the power lies in our testimony and our spoken word concerning the blood of Jesus so the Bible teaches about the blood of Jesus. It says that the blood of Jesus has got power to redeem. It has power to cleanse. It has power to justify. The redemption through the blood is written in Ephesians 1 verse 7. It says in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins according to the riches of his grace which he lavished on us. The blood also cleanses us from sin. First John 1 verse 7 up to 9 says, And the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The blood also justifies us. It means that it makes us as though we never sinned. And there is sanctification through the blood. Sanctification means to make holy or to be separated for holy use. Hebrews 13 verse 12 says, Therefore Jesus also, that he might satisfy, he might sanctify the people through his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Conscience and guilt, they are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. How much more will the blood of Jesus Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to save the living God? There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ redeems us back to God from Satan's kingdom. Ephesians 1 verse 7 explains this. There is also cleansing of all sin by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus justifies us. It makes us righteous before God just as if we have never sinned. Repent, repentance involves changing the mind. The mind of the repenter changes the mind of how they look at God. It makes the person to understand that God loves them and that he does not want them to perish in their sins. It also changes the mind of the believer of the new convict that they were lost and on their way to hell but not anymore because of being repented or being born again by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for the sins the believers must believe that Jesus died and rose again to give them eternal life. And the believers should also receive Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. In prayer, they must express their commitment to believe on Him and invite Jesus to be in their life according to Romans 10 verse 9. The believer may not want to pray with you when you are confit, converting them to be born again. They may be embarrassed because of people that are near, so you might need to move into a private place. If the new person or the person to be born again is fearful, you may need to explain to them and give them reassurance that there is nothing to fear 
if the fear is unknown just continue to reassure them people may want some time to think about it so one needs to ask the holy spirit if it's not the right time the holy spirit will let you back off and then maybe you can call that person another day otherwise you might need to explain to the person if the person says i believe in christ but i just can't repeat the sinner's prayer then you have to explain to them that it is the devil which is stopping them to pray that prayer the sinner's prayer so that you go ahead and pray for them and rebuke the power of the devil then the devil will lose them and the new convert would be ready to receive Jesus Christ a new believer or a new convert must not just repeat the sinner's prayer and be left there one must be given assurance of salvation from the word of god not just from the feelings the new believer must also be given some guidelines on how to begin growing in christ so that they can mature so that they can go on to produce fruits and even eventually to bring other souls unto christ so there is a great need for the new convert to be followed up to to have a follow up on them to check up on them and to continue to support them the next item is talking with god this is through prayer why should we pray the writer explains that prayer brings pleasure to god and this is mentioned in proverbs 15 verse 8 which says that the prayer of an upright person is the delight of the father prayer is also done to deepen the fellowship with god psalms 42 verse 1 to 2 says one must long for god and thirst for god one also should pray because jesus prayed and so one has to follow suit and jesus went early to a deserted place he went there to pray this is shown in the bible in verse 5 of luke chapter 5 verse 16 and one needs to pray because Jesus commanded this Luke 18 verse 1 says Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up another reason why people or believers should pray is because of Jesus promise God wants us to receive good things which will bring us joy the bible is written in verse 7 of Matthew chapter 7 and Jesus said you have not asked for anything in my name then you must ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete and the other reason why people must pray is so that satan can be defeated we pray or we should pray so that we don't fall into temptation jesus taught this to his disciples and it is written in the bible on mark 14 verse 38 and Paul explains on the end of the passage of spiritual armor that pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests keep on praying for all the saints the other reason why believers must pray is to express their trust in God indicating that 
we need help from God and through his power God can help us. First Peter 5:7 says, "Cast your cares on him as he cares." So there are many reasons that were written by the author why one needs to pray. The writer also goes on to explain how we should pray. We should pray following the spiritual shopping list. I quote, which is a list of ones. This is written on page 33 of the book. It says we can get four aspects of prayer from the word A C T S X which means adoration, confession, thanksgiving and supplication. During adoration one worships God in spirit and in truth. And adoration is just telling God how great he is and how much we love him. You must take time to tune into God's presence. One can do this by reading the Bible. And there's also silent adoration as written in the Bible on Psalms 46 verse 10. After adoration one must get into confession. This is to avoid and confess the sin which can be a barrier to prayers resulting them in not being answered. So this needs to be seriously taken into account so that God is not offended as sin or unconfessed sin caused the death of Jesus there are some sins which can cause barriers and some of them were listed by Dr Guti in his book those sins of being unforgiving or not apologizing or reconciling selfish motives marital problems doubts and unbelief rebellion treating people or things as more important than god idolatry or pride so god must convict you of sin and then one must ask god to forgive so that they can be cleansed by the blood of Jesus then if you cannot free get free from this guilt you may need to share the problem with someone such as a christian elder or a pastor or the christian leaders following the prayer of confession one goes on to thanksgiving prayer just giving thanks to god Just like the 10 lepers who were healed by Jesus they went back to him to thank him you also should thank God all the time for everything even in difficulty or suffering God wants us or deserves our thanks the next item of prayer would be intercession this is a heartfelt prayer for other people and situations it can be praying for pastors or preachers or of presenting your request to God or just praying for everyone or those that are in authority we should also ask according to the will of God as the bible teaches we must look to Christ and remain in him ask in faith and then the faith is activated by prayerful reading of the bible so we should not try to help god but to do everything he says we must ask in humility not telling god what to do we must ask with a real desire and ask and its implications for what we ask we must have a real desire for what we ask for There is also deeper intercession where petition is when you are just praying for individuals 
and then you give your personal needs to God and make your request known to him according to his promises. Matthew 7:7 7, 7 says, "Keep asking and it will be given to you." Then a conversation is a dialogue which involves uh, a believer praying and then God communicating back to us during prayer. Revelation 3 verse 20 says, I stand and knock. If anyone hears my voice, I will come in. This is Jesus now saying, I stand and knock. Then we'll be hearing from Jesus and then accepting Jesus. And after hearing Jesus, Jesus will come in. Then intercession reaches out to other Christians. It means going between, like being in the middle, interceding for other Christians, pleading for them, as explained in 1 Timothy 2 verse 1. We can have prayers of intercession in a small group whereby the, these prayers are held maybe as a church and there are some advantages. There is more power when you are praying corporately. Matthew 18 verse 19 to 20 says that. So for a prayer group, the writer gives the guidelines for a prayer group. It says that one group must start by singing praise to God following Psalms 138 verse 1 to 2 which says I will give thanks with my heart and I will sing praise. Then you go on to ask the Holy Spirit to review any areas that are not pleasing to God. Confess and accept God's cleansing. After this, you must submit your own thoughts and feelings to God. And then you resist the devil. James 4 verse 7 and he will flee. And you also need to ask for the fear of God which overrides any fear of the other. Because when you are praying in the group, there are other people next to you. So when you ask for God to take away the fear, then you can pray freely. You then need to ask the Holy Spirit to anoint you and then to direct your prayers. And you have finished dealing with the voice of the enemy or of the cell you feel relaxed and you can listen now to god and you can get any any feedback from god or any directives from god so any prayer concerns for your group can then be presented you must listen to god as Habakkuk 2 verse 20 says, The Lord is in his temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. We need to learn to be silent before God. God spoke to Elijah, not in the great wind, the earthquake or the fire, but in a gentle whisper. So some time needs to be spent listening to God after having given your own thoughts to him. Jesus said in John 10 verse 27, My sheep listen to my voice. So God may give you a recurring thought like a name of a person or a situation or the words of the Bible or a verse can suddenly come to mind. Or you can have a vision or even a word of prophecy or wisdom or knowledge from, from God. So we must pray without ceasing, as the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17. And persist in prayer. God sometimes may not say yes immediately. So we have to keep on praying and persist in prayer as Jesus did in Gethsemane, Matthew 26 verse 44. Fasting is also needed as it brings spiritual sensitivity and it, it strengthens the prayer. So one needs to take into account fasting, which needs to be private. Matthew 6 verse 17 to 18 
explains one also needs to pray in the spirit asking to the holy spirit to fill and guide the prayers and so that the prayer uh, is led by the holy spirit and the spirit will help in our weakness as romans 8 verse 26 to 27 says we don't know what to pray for but the spirit intercedes for us with groans that we cannot express and the spirit searches our hearts and mind and so the spirit can intercede for the saints the deep prayer can also show itself in weeping or an inward sense of grief so pray for the spirit of prayer and the holy spirit can be praying for you and in you so that the father just hears what the holy spirit is praying and that would be the prayer of the believer some people may have difficulties of prayer in prayer like lack of time but if you are considering prayer to be important then you can create time some can have lack of concentration this will require finding a quiet place or a seat in the car so that there's no disturbance and the bible is a great source for inspiration and then you must fix your mind on christ and also have time to relax and meditate and adore him some thoughts can be wandering during prayer and this can be used as topics and some various body postures can be used like sitting or walking and the prayer must be done loudly or the words can be whispered or a prayer list can be made prayer groups can also be done and people may be scared that they will be heard praying for the first time but everyone feels like that so one should not be scared to pray for the first time as everyone will be excited to hear you pray for the first time so don't be embarrassed some people cannot continue to pray uh, or others they can pray silently so if you are a leader don't allow too long a silence look into the group and also out of the group praying for the church as a whole and in the nation avoid praying for many topics in each prayer meeting christians can have demons and these demons they enter their victims through various doorways this can be in form of human personalities that open a way to the demons and the demons they don't wait to be invited they just come in so through the door of sin which was given as an example in the book there is ananias and sapphira which is explained in the bible on acts 5 verse 1 to 11 this couple converted they schemed a deceit whereby they sold their property and they were supposed to offer it to church but they didn't offer the whole amount they stole some of the proceeds and they wanted to show off to the other christians that they were good people or members who could do good things giving all to god as a result they told a lie to cover up their deceit and each of these the deceit and the lies they all contributed and they caused their misdeed we see in the slide there the two of them they ended up just falling down in church and dying there and then so we see here peter descending satan and his work 
in Acts 5 verse 3 so the demon entered Ananias and Sapphira and they ended up dying another example given by the author is that of Judas Iscariot in John 13 verse 2 he loved the world more and Jesus says in 1 John 2 verse 15 to 17 the one that loves the world the father is not in him so this means the person that loves the world doesn't have the love of the father in him and because of this we see Judas Iscariot he loved money he lusted towards money and he ended up perishing the other door of sin is through the wrong associations and this can cause demons to enter the demons can live via several ways including the mouth the nose and the eyes during deliverance the candidate to be delivered from the demons must have accepted Jesus and be born again this is important according to the author of the book because the demons can live when commanded to do so but they will definitely come back if the deliverance minister leaves and come back with more demons so one needs to have been born again so that when the demons are cast out they go for good one must also forgive completely not forgiving completely it results in the demons having a legal right to continue reoccupying the believers and one has to repent and confess honestly x319 says repent and turn again that your sins may be blotted out that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the lord and confession means here opening up to the past or the childhood so that the deliverance can know and the deliverance can minister targeting any grips that the demons may have over you to be broken and this gives the deliverance minister an idea of the type of demons that would be wrestling with you so confession can give an indication to the minister what point the demons sneaked into your life and how the demons got into you so the deliverance worker would be able to choose the appropriate tools to use for deliverance so the areas that the deliverance minister can use to break every case and some would be suffering from sicknesses or unhappiness or the businesses may be failing so these cases may need to be crawl, to be broken by renunciation colossians 2 verse 14 can be used to break cases praise and worshiping god there should be a period of praising and worshiping god focus should be placed on God's love and kindness his mercy his power his excellence and the demons they fear the praises so the Holy Spirit also needs to be invited to cast out the demons and the strong men must be bound so that they do not operate because the demons they hear and obey they need to be addressed to so that they can be they can be responding and they know and can respond to authority 
you can speak the word with authority and remember that we have been given authority against every demonic power so the deliverance minister uses tools like the name of Jesus the blood of Jesus the word of God they can also sing and praise and worship the Lord speaking in tongues is also a powerful weapon for casting out demons also discerning of spirits needs to be used as this can help to separate actions of the believer from that of the demon a combination or a single tool can be used at a time just following the leading of the holy spirit so the demons they can indicate when they are commanded out they can they can come out through the nose or the mouth or any openings of the human body through the mouth they can come out like gagging or choking shrieking loud shouts or drooling or groaning through the nose it can come out through the sneezing or some deep nose breathing through the eyes the demon can come out as tears other ways for demons to live include terrible odor sweating and various manifestations can take place during deliverance for example pride or speaking in false tongues the devil tries to try to to side track you from delivering someone he wants to deliver to to delay deliverance as written in the bible in second corinthians 2 verse 11 so deliverance has to be maintained and one needs to know how they can stay free after deliverance this can be done by guarding their thoughts the writer explains that the thoughts they are like a seed they grow and they produce fruit so you need to guard your thoughts by fellowshipping with other Christians so that you are not alone you need to discipline your confession and to read the word of God and you need to crucify your flesh on the cross and rejoice in the Lord always be a happy christian philippians 4 verse 4 and be free in your spirit get excited in the lord a rejoicing christian is a terror to the kingdom of darkness never worry the bible commands christians not to worry it forbids worrying so watch what you read hear and see as these offer a way for the devil to enter people through even reading of books avoid idleness get busy with the lord's work and be separated make the most of the holy ghost baptism laying of hands and transference of spirits we see on the slide dr e h goti laying hands on one of the leaders of the churches the laying of hands there is always a transference of spirits that takes place it can be a good spirit or a bad spirit in the bible or numbers 27 verse 8 the lord said to moses take joshua the son of nun a man in whom is the spirit and lay your hand on him numbers 11 verse 16 to 17 we see moses here gathering 70 men elders of israel to be elders of the people or officers over them Moses is instructed to take them to the tabernacle of the congregation so that they may stand there and then the spirit of Moses would be put upon those men so that they bear the burden of people and that Moses would not bear the burden alone God had to take from the spirit which was upon Moses and give it to the 70 elders these leaders were to be of one mind 
of one accord and the head to be of one spirit so this does not happen when people take the bad spirit when they take the bad spirit then we have division and separation this becomes evident when the leaders or the pastors have got contrary spirits so a key to the success of apostle paul's success was that timothy and titus and the other associates were of the same spirit of paul they were raised by him and they went in his spirit and were faithful to him in all ways so success followed them this is what happens when there is transference of the good spirit so the incoming elders and leaders when they came in like the 70 elders they were given the same spirit of Moses and there was submission amongst them they all accepted authority they worked for the benefit of all the people and they did not start their own groups they supported Moses fully all the days of his life so they were of one spirit and they had the same vision and the same burden and the same determination if they had another vision then there would be discord amongst them and they would be divided loyalties in the spirit that was upon Moses as it was put on the 70 elders the way to assist Moses they needed the spirit that was on Moses so that they could assist him they were not taking over according to the book Sunday morning bible lectures page 65 they were just giving pastoral care to the people in the spirit of Moses so there will be growth and harmony and the enemy cannot penetrate if the spirit of god dwells in all the leaders and their subordinates the spirit of unity of loyalty and oneness is a strong link it can only be broken if there is a contrary spirit the contrary spirit can affect the links unless the spirit is recognized and acted upon or dealt with and the contrary spirit if not dealt with can cause havoc or disaster in the kingdom of god so the spirit of division can harm the congregation and the leaders causing confusion amongst the group or amongst the church so laying of hands on men can be transference of spirits of the men so one has to keep themselves pure as the bible says in 1 Timothy 5 verse 22 lay hands suddenly on no man neither be partaker of other men's sins keep yourself pure so next time according to the author when you have lanes laid on you think and know that you could get a wrong or a bad spirit spiritual gifts can be transferred as well as evil spirits transference of the wrong spirit can cause accidents can cause incidents an example is seen in the bible when the israelites were at kadesh barnea at the jordan they were instructed to choose a man from the 12 tribes who went to spy the land they were rulers of thousands of tribes and they went to check the land someone among the 10 made that leadership bring a report what was fearful to the children of Israel now the natural man is coming 
as an angel of light. He came to the land and said he had seen that the land was flowing of milk and honey and there was fruit that he was carrying, a cluster of grapes and there was a bat which followed. You said the people, they are strong. The cities are old and very great. They are giants and they are as grasshoppers. These men, they came as angels of light. God's word and Moses were true. The land, milk and honey and fruits were all there, but Caleb and other spirits, he jumped to his feet, stood the people and said, Invested, let us go at once and possess it, for we are well above and able to overcome it. Caleb and Joshua had a different spirit from that of the other ten spies. So here are two spirits seeking to take hold of the people. They were contrary to one another. The two had the right spirit of their leader Moses, the spirit of unbelief clothed with a practical cloak. We saw it is true, it is great, but we are unable. The enemy never comes to the children of God as a roaring lion. The pastor can be a hard worker doing great things and accomplishing much. But there may be a bad following that may be doubts of his greatness or there can be doubts of a negative spirit which can be good or can be wrong. The next item is healing. God desires you to be healed. In third John chapter 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you should be in good health, even as your soul prospers. And the author gave an, a few verses where people were healed in the Bible, and the methods that were mainly used by Jesus for healing was through command and touch. And we were encouraged by the author that we must speak a word of faith. As seen in the Bible, Jesus commanded and people were healed. So we are justified by faith. And when a sinner is justified, it means God, the judge, has declared him innocent. That's an amazing act of God's grace. So Christ died for sinners and salvation is only achieved by faith. It can be simply stated that by the grace of God through faith, a person puts their faith in Jesus Christ who died for him and they get saved. So. The salvation can be seen by a life of good deeds. The works prove that a person has received faith. And faith is explained by being a response to the whole person, whereby the mind it gets to understand that Jesus died for our sins and the emotions being emotional is a conviction that Jesus is Lord and the will is involved and it will be an act of commitment which is not merely just knowing about Jesus or feeling love but committing oneself to him for all the rest of your life and also aiming to please him. So faith is committing your life to Christ and becoming a disciple. Then the Holy Spirit unites with the person's mind and spirit and then you are referred to as born again. Yes, John 3 verse 6 to 7. Child Evangelism the decision to invite Jesus into their hearts is very important in God's eyes. One must know about children that they are born humble. 
they only get proud as they grow older. So they learn pride from their adults. Jesus used a child in Matthew 18 verse 2 as a visual aid of humility. Children are also teachable. They are at the key age of learning. And a child up to the age of seven learns already approximately half of all the knowledge that they will learn all throughout their life. So they learn a lot of things like walking, running, talking, and many things. So they must be taught the gospel at this age so that they will grow in the all in the knowledge of Christ. Proverbs twenty two six says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and he will not depart from it when he is old. Children, they are curious. Their eyes are always open. They want to see what is going on, and their questions, they pour out like, why? and how they listen to anything that anyone has to say about Jesus as long as you make it cheerful and attractive. Children can receive gifts always such as clothes and money. It's easy for them to receive the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. The children, they are also dependent. They are conscious of the needs in their lives and look to older people to meet those needs. They are not proud to ask. Jesus greatly loves children. Matthew 19 14 says, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. So children, they want genuine love and they recognize it and respond to it. Children can also believe in Jesus Christ. And Matthew 18, 6 says, Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. The words believe in me indicate that children can believe in children, in Jesus children can believe in Jesus. When teaching children, one must remember that it, your attitude must be loving and caring as you share with children, and you must be sincere and genuine. You must be happy and excited and joyful as you share. Don't look down on the children, and you must research your subject well before the children's Bible story book. Use stories from the Bible and tell the story in a simple manner. Use a Bible verse or verses regularly through biblical truth and use a couple of children from the audience as lesson aid to illustrate your point. Use visual aids freely and ask questions as you are sharing and encourage answers from the children. If they give wrong answers, don't belittle them, but that rather say you are getting close. Teenagers, they always want to be challenged and they have a standard set for them. They must be reasonable and attainable that cause them to rise above low standards of their friends. Don't focus on their negatives but on their positive. Teach teenagers who Jesus is. Challenge them to be not ashamed of Jesus and this gospel. Young people, they need a leader to follow. Jesus was a good leader. They can be led by him because he's a good leader. Share with them facts of resurrection from the word of God and from the history and introduce teenagers to the Holy Spirit and his power. Share about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1 to 31. Invite questions from the young people and give them answers from God's word and your personal experience on topics such as political, social, sexuality, pornography, church breakaways, and relevance of the biblical and prayer. 
youth must also be involved in training, equip them so that they be the best point of conduct to win young people to Christ. Train them how to reach their family and friends. Integrate young workers into your outreach program. Equip them to live the life of Christian. Christians in the market world or a marketplace of the world. Create youth for teams to work in areas of social need like unemployed, the orphans, ages, or age homes, hospital projects, and many other areas. Conducting church meetings is important as the Bible encourages in Hebrews 10 verse 25 so that Christians meet one another and encourage one another even more as they see the Lord coming nearer and nearer. The author gives the basic principles that business must be accomplished. A church board must take or hold business meetings in order to take action. And the discussion must not consume the whole meeting. It should not be turned into a debate. And also the human feelings must not be respected. And the procedure must be followed so that each item is dealt with before permitting anything else to intervene. Each individual must be treated justly and fairly and in good faith. It, each individual has the right to know what is going on and time spent in promoting understanding is usually time well spent. A decision must be reached in time. The, pair, the chairperson should be familiar with the tools of his trade, having knowledge and being equipped to lead the group. When you are preparing for a prayer meeting, you need to be in touch with the pastor and the members of the committee. There must be arrangements of where to meet and what time. Also, refreshments may need to be organized and what time they will be supplied or served. And a preliminary agenda should be in place and the leader can be proposed for that. Members should be notified and this can be done through the pulpit or in the church magazine. Mail of the agenda to all the people concerned can be sent via the email and the group of assistants can be enlisted for their help to make phone calls to remind members of when the group is meeting. The leadership can also receive a call from the chairing person of the meeting so that there's no misunderstanding and everyone knows their role to play in the meeting. And you also need to be a good hostess arriving early and welcoming the members by greeting them as they arrive. If it's a business meeting, it needs to be brief. They need to be a leader and they must be dressed appropriately and standing straight and looking straight in the eye. Petty differences must not be concentrated on. There must be fairness and order must be maintained. To control others, the leader should control themselves. Be modest. Everyone, don't try to prove that they are wrong and you are the only person who is right. If it's in a committee meeting, you need to be patient and let the people come to their own decision. Be objective, sharing and allowing the members of the group to share their opinions and viewpoints. And you must try and understand the group and understand their motives in the group.
you need to be alert and listen to all of the comments that are made. You must be able to synthesize and add together the various group member contributions and don't reject the group's outline but just put the ideas together. Be able to rephrase remarks and do it with a sense of humor. During the program, maintain time and program the time it started and keep time of when the program is finishing. Focus attention on the speaker. The chairperson must be alert. Don't forget the duties of courtesy. You can have flowers and welcome the visitors and express appreciation of the visitors. Introducing a speaker and also introducing the audience to the speaker. And you must not give the speaker's speech or steal their thunder. You need to be brief as well and declare or distribute the proposal with the order of the business and opening with a prayer or a devotion is needed a song can be sung and a scripture can be read then a roster to check who is in attendance if there was a previous meeting the chairperson can ask the secretary to read previous minutes which can be rectified as needed and if there are reports the chairperson can turn to the report if the meeting is involving many many departments if there was unfinished business from previous meeting it should be attended to and any new business can be attended to if a meeting is too long or can't be finished it can be adjoined for later the the meeting, the close of it should be motioned and seconded. The person who is chairing the meeting can call for a discussion and then each member who wishes to speak must obtain the floor and then the chairperson offers no opinion but their job is to just maintain order in the meeting. Speakers should avoid personality conflicts or improper attitude. Members must vote on the motion and they must choose to create or break a tie. Committee meetings, they must be appointed and they, this can be done by electing a ballot or there can be nominations from the floor. Nominations by the chairperson can also happen when names are given and then voted for or appointment by the selection committee. All members can come to agreement as to the method used. When one is preparing for a meeting, you must get the necessary information from the secretary, arrange for the meeting time and place and remind members by mail or phone calls and follow up a day before the meeting. Prepare a meeting place to facilitate the work of the committee. The room should be well lit and comfortable. Be a good host even if the committee is not meeting in your home. Start the meeting on time. If you are late, you only prove that those who came on time that they were very early. Introduce the question and problem the group and clarify anything that need clarification and get the discussion underway. Be aware of committee variations and don't dominate the discussion. Avoid arguments and end discussion with a summary. A committee report may need to be written and should say we did this, we did this and Election officers can be done by nominating candidates for the office and then voting. Proper forms can be used to write the minutes of the meeting 
leaving room for alterations or additions and corrections. The minutes should include the kind of meeting, whether it was a regular one, a meeting was special, and the name of the organization, the date and time, and the place of meeting, the reading and approval of minutes of previous meeting. When the minutes are read and approved, you need to write approved in the date also and also give it to the chairperson to sign in. When a committee wishes to recommend a particular action, the action is written as a resolution and placed in the committee report. In conclusion, the book Sunday Morning Bible Lectures written by Dr. E. H. Guti is a great resource on the aspects of extending the kingdom of God, how to be an effective soul winner. It explains as well the power of the blood of Jesus and how to cast out demons. It gives an overview of healing and also explains about child evangelism. This makes it a vital, important book to the library of any believer, even the matured Christians can find this book a great resource. It gives practical advice, practical directions, and practical steps of even how to cast out demons. This is a very interesting book. I found the book very resourceful as it contained many as it contained many references to the Bible. References that were used for this presentation included Sunday morning Bible study lectures by Dr. E. H. Guti, NIV 2011 Study Bible, Know Your Bible 2008, published by Baba. Thank you. Presented by Sarah Nungrai, student at Amfig, lecturer Dr. Mafuri Ranwa, Melbourne, Australia, 2015. Thank you for listening.